many of us ever know what it is to become the perfect version of ourselves? This is Decoding Superhuman with your host, Boomer Anderson. All right, the sponsor for today's podcast is a member of the toolkit that I use on an almost daily basis to upgrade my state of being and have used it actually for the past couple of years. The guys over at Neurohacker Collective have done a fantastic job. You've heard me rave about the original stack as well as Qualia Mind on the show. But now I'm so excited because the suite of products has grown. You have Qualia Focus for that near term bump. You have Qualia Mind Caffeine Free for all my caffeine sensitive listeners out there. But their latest product, which just came out, is oh so exciting. It's called Eternus, and it's a 38 ingredient formula containing the most researched and premium ingredients on earth for supporting cellular health. This is key to combating the symptoms of aging. If you want to check out Eternus, Qualia Mind, Focus, or any of the Neurohacker products, go over to neurohacker.com and plug in the code BOOMER. You'll get an additional 15% off your order. Enjoy. Satu, it's podcast day. And it's Friday. Hi, Boomer. Ah, we're just <laughs> telling people when we're recording this. This is great. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's all good. It's all good. It's sunny. It's kind of summer. Uh, but not really, right? It's past May 1. We are getting sun. At least I see there's sun in the Nordics. There's kind of sun here in Amsterdam. All is good, yes, right? all is good. So we have a little bit of an announcement to make. And this is interesting, and I hope all of our podcast listeners will find this. We are going to start releasing a newsletter. That newsletter is called The Throwdown because we both don't like the name newsletter. <laughs> and so The Throwdown is going to come out on Thursdays, and it's going to be – think of it as your go-to resource for the latest in performance. You'll hear all about our latest podcasts and guests and all of that kind of stuff, but also we're going to get into the technologies and the science behind performance, things that we find interesting, whether that be scientific articles – Uh, technologies that we're using to upgrade both our physical and mental performance, or just general things that we think could help you become more epic, more superhuman. So if you want to sign up for that newsletter, go over to decodingsuperhuman.com slash throwdown. You just put your name and your email address in there, and you'll start receiving them. And again, this is not, we're not going to spam you with anything. This is going to be very short and to the point. Think less than 500 words. And we're looking forward to sending it to you. But I think in the meantime, we have to get to a cool topic today. Shall we, Satya? Absolutely. Let's go for it. So let's talk about exercise because exercise, or as I more broadly like to categorize it as movement, is one of those areas where I think when people associate the word health, they think of diet and exercise. And we've spent a lot of time on this show talking about how health is really a complex system. There's different elements, interactions, and the purpose is really performance. But exercise is definitively one of those modalities that we do focus on. And one of the areas that both you and I have a very acute interest in, right? Mm -hmm. And part of that is because we've both broken ourselves. Do you mind going in and just opening, well, I was going to say opening a kimono, but that's not appropriate. Um, Just telling us a little bit about how you've pushed it too far. Yeah, sure. Um, It's always a good story to start with. Um, (laughs) I think... At the moment, if I start there, I have this like a plan for long-term health, including movement and training and working out. Um, it it wasn't like that when I first got started. Um, my uh, hobby is CrossFit, uh, which I'm very passionate about. Um, oh, we're going to debate that later. <laughs> it's a dangerous sport. But I think my definition of CrossFit has changed over a course of years. Because when I first got started with uh, doing CrossFit, I, I before that I was doing all sorts of like gym and jogging and the normal stuff that everyone does. And I didn't really find enough challenge in it. And I think that led me to CrossFit because I'm a very goal and action oriented person. 
Um, so it suited me very well. So I went to these CrossFit classes and they told me, okay, I go like five days a week. And I'm like, Ooh, wow, that's a lot. But I started doing that and I got hooked. But I also led to injuries because I didn't really think, I didn't have a plan at all. I just went all in 100% or more each and every day. Um, I wasn't thinking about the recovery or my sleep or my nutrition, nothing. It was just so much fun. Um, but then again, when the injury started coming up, I had, to- what, what's your worst CrossFit injury? And I'm kind of curious. Worst. Um, I think the worst in that sense that it's been like, it's been bothering me throughout the years has been my shoulder. And I think a lot of CrossFit people can relate to that. Yeah. It's all that kipping. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I started it all wrong and that's it when it happened pretty early. So it's always been there in the background, but it's, it's all good now. And then of course I've had some back issues. I, I injured my ankle. Um, yeah. A lot of things had happened, but not only <laughs> due to CrossFit, just sudden mistakes in life also <laughs> led to injuries. So uh, let's not really blame CrossFit for all of that. But I think, yeah, so the whole thing is to, for me, the change happened when I started feeling more negative feelings around the uh, performance and the sport rather than keeping the, the en- enjoyment and the fun of it and, and getting healthier. So I had to actually go back and start looking at the planning and the the goals that I actually have, not only within CrossFit, but in life in, in terms of health and performance and, and recovery. Um, and I can talk about more in terms of what's happening today, but do you want to shoot in? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll go through a little bit of my background and then we can talk about how we become more enlightened, if you will. So... In terms of exercise, I've I've been obsessed with this probably since the age of 12. I started weightlifting way too early. I was one of these people, I grew up in Philadelphia, just to present this background here, and what's the most famous movie ever about Philadelphia? It's, it's Rocky, mm. right? <laughs> and Rocky has, in whether it's Rocky 1 or I think they're up to now Creed 2, uh, there's always a training sequence and that training sequence usually involves rocky 24 7 training and in various points in my life i've tried to become rocky Uh, it's no secret it's one of my top five favorite movies but uh, initially when i started you know i was weightlifting once or twice a day i was doing some sort of cardiovascular workout two or three times a day and this is when i was like 16 years old And so I, at one point, trying to become an amateur bodybuilder, which is a little bit of another story, (laughs) but, um, you know, progressively went and pushed the, to that brink. And when I was 16 years old, I partially herniated my L4, L5 or whatever you would call that right there. Luckily didn't need surgery, but the story goes on, went through college or university, as they say in international world. Uh, and then went into Wall Street where I basically didn't work out my first year of being an analyst in investment banking. I then rekindled my love of exercise uh, through actually MMA of all things and then began to overtrain again. <laughs> and so it became rather than uh, weightlifting and running all the time, it was let me go do Muay Thai twice a day or Jiu Jitsu, a couple of different things. Um, that eventually transitioned into CrossFit where I, like you, went through basically the CrossFit ramp up, which is you get really excited you start to, you know, you start to look good, you start to feel good, you start to exercise quite a lot. And I even went for the thousand dollar t-shirt, right? Like I, I have my level, my level one instructor certification. And over time, my body began to break down and this was really touched on with Dave Heitman on the podcast. And really what happened was, is I was pushing it from every angle. I was traveling twice, three times a week, changing time zones, getting on red eye flights to Amsterdam or which is where I live now, uh, from Singapore to, you know, landing. And then immediately the first thing I would do is, is upon landing is go and try and bang out a hundred percent friend time and just try and get sub four minutes. Right. And as you learn more, you come to realize that that was pretty stupid. Uh, everybody's heard about how I've been diagnosed with a heart condition. And I do think 
over exercising contributed to that. Like I was trying to be rich frony and it's nobody's fault but my own, but there's times where I was exercising twice a day, CrossFit workouts and pushing it to that hundred percent max. That's not healthy. Nope. <laughs> and so <laughs> when you start looking at things like inflammation and not only inflammation injuries or just general stress resilience, I was basically at zero on stress resilience. I was high on inflammation, etc. But live and learn. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Exactly. So how have you refined what you view as programming? Well, um, I think the way I view my uh, CrossFit today, um, as I said, it, it is different from the days when I started. I think it's more about the movement, uh, the aspect that you just mentioned earlier. It's more functional fitness in sort of uh, that I have, I still have my goals. I would love to be able to qualify for a certain competition and so on. And it requires hard work. And I do have a coach that programs for me. I do still train five days a week, sometimes six, but it is more about, as my coach says as well, train smarter, not harder. Um, and I think that makes very much sense. I need to look into the systems approach as we a lot talk about with decoding superhuman. Uh, I need to take all aspects of life uh, into consideration to make myself hit those goals. Um, so it is a lot about the recovery, uh, taking care of my body, uh, not pushing myself over a certain limit. Although I do think that in order to actually take a next step in, in any career or sports, you do need to sometimes cross the line to irritate your system a bit. Otherwise, you're just staying on the same level. But once again, smarter, not harder. Um, and have a plan, have a yearly plan that makes sense to you, um, that leads up to maybe an event, uh, wh whether it is a marathon for some people and it could be a CrossFit competition. And then you have a periodized um, training plan, including all the other aspects. It's not just the one and a half hour workout that you put in at the gym. For me, it's in the morning, but it is everything around that. When do I go to sleep? When do I eat? What do I eat? How do I track myself? How do I make sure that my heart rate variation is in the optimal level that I can actually uh, go and do the other workout the next day and so on. So it's a lot of, it's, it's a puzzle. It's a lot of pieces in the puzzle that I like to nowadays to take into consideration. Earlier, it was just like 100% maximum speed. No, don't care about the rest. How, how is it for you? Uh, to say that I've changed things is, is an understatement, actually. I've completely changed everything. So even after the CrossFit thing, I decided to push my limits once again further by... Uh, going to a powerlifting competition, which the way I trained for that was kind of a reiteration of my Rocky experience. And so I, like you, have somebody who does a lot of my programming for me, uh, more in the sense that they give me buckets to fill and then I pick the individual exercises. But I do like going back to that whole systems approach because my objective has changed, right? It's no longer, in the case of powerlifting, being the strongest in the room. It's more about, we use the term anti-fragile a lot, but anti-fragile meaning, you know, how do I perform at my best when everybody else is concerned or in a volatile situation? So how do I perform at my best in a volatile situation? Now that, when you look at that, when it comes to a training perspective, it involves so much more. And so what I've done is sort of reconfigure my life around this idea of training. And so first starting with the objective of becoming stress resilient and anti-fragile. I still do powerlifting a couple times a week. And like you, I have a goal of, I'll be participating in a competition in October, November timeframe. Um, and I do think that that's very useful. Now, what has changed is sort of what I focus on on a day-to-day -day basis. So leading up to, it's now May, that's five months, six months away, right? Mm. So in my own individual periodization leading up to that competition, right now I'm focused a little bit on endurance as well as flexibility of different tissues. 
right? Because what I've done before is I've kind of ignored the flexibility element, the endurance element in order to pursue strength. And so right now for the next two months, I'm focused on endurance. Uh, then it will move into more of a strength bias and then leading into the competition will be almost purely a strength bias. Yeah, yeah. And so there's also other elements that I work into it. So stress comes in all kinds of forms. Actually, exercise is a stressor. And how do you become really, really good at handling stress? Well, you can train that. And so, yes, I go and spend 60 to 75 minutes in the gym every morning, but I also add on different aspects and elements of my day. And so when it comes to productivity, what works very well for me is the Pomodoro technique. And that consists of me going really hard on one focused subject for a period of anywhere between 25 and 90 minutes. And then I take a break. This methodology has been used with many of our CEO entrepreneur clients. Yeah, yeah. And in that break, I also have some sort of either movement or stress resilience practice. Um, that could be anything from meditation to heart math to, I guess, since we had him on the show, Patrick McCallan's Oxygen Advantage stuff. Uh, but also, you know, I have a kettlebell here. I can do some body weight exercises and just kind of layering those in throughout the day. Hanging, which is one of my favorite things to do mm -hmm. uh, to loosen up shoulder injuries. Yeah, that's awesome. And all of it is really on this concept of how do we become stress resilient and anti-fragile. Now, that may seem like a lot, but if you break it down, what I'm doing is I'm having hyper-focused time periods with a break that allows me to move a little bit more or to focus on my goal, which is that anti-fragile component. Yeah, it's super interesting. Um, and led me to think about how now we, we've been talking about uh, quite a high intensity training and we train a lot um i think not we don't want to send the signal that everyone should be training five days a week um and and you, you all of you need to find your own way of working out it could be just going for walks as well if that's what you want to do um i think related to the mental game and how you can become even better in, in outside the gym or outside your workouts. I think what the effort that you put into your training can help tremendously back in the office or when you're doing other type of work at home. And for me, it's like when I'm sitting on a, a salt air bike and doing uh, intervals, that just creates this focused atmosphere in my head that I love to challenge my brain like do I have what it takes to stick to this intensity with the bike for two and a half minutes then do it again for 15 times or whatever crazy things I do um, and I remember that feeling when I'm then back at the office and focusing on a task and I think that has taught me a lot so it, they both serve one another so to speak oh it's brilliant right uh, what you just said is effectively what we both believe in and why we get along so well it's, yeah. it's how, how, how you do something is how you do everything uh, and so that applies to training as well as your your everyday life now I think in closing this what I think is useful for people is to talk about a framework for really how to identify your right exercise program. Because if you read men or women's health, you're going to get prescribed something new every month. Uh, and it's going to, by the way, it will come back again a year later when they release that same ep or same article. So the one thing that I think people need to spend a lot of time on or just get really introspective on, is what is your goal, right? Um, we talked about this with nutrition, but what's your objective? If your objective is to live to 120, well, maybe something like a CrossFit may not be right for you. There is some elements of high-intensity interval training which are great for mitochondrial health as well as focus, but you know maybe we're looking at a different program. So start by really thinking about your objective. And that could be you wanna be a bodybuilder, in which case your programming is gonna be very different from that person that looks like 120. And then the strategies all come into play. And what I would say to people who are listening to this, strategies include more than just your actual movement practice. Are you getting enough rest? Uh, are you 
eating right for your goals. You can go to the gym 10 times in a week, and if you're eating like crap and not sleeping, you're still going to do damage to your body. And then then when you have your strategy and your objectives laid out, the tactics really become easy, right? So if, if your goal is longevity, and let's say you have genetic predispositions to either inflammation or let's say bone density, because that's an easier one, uh, working in some strength training is useful. In fact, strength training is a great thing for longevity. Being able to hip hinge at 90 years old oh, yeah. is an amazing thing. Uh, so working in things like deadlifts, et cetera, highly functional movements, as you mentioned. And I like to add just to the end here, like measurement, how to measure your, your success. So day-to-day -day measurement, you've heard our episode with Jason Moore. HRV is a great thing to measure the health of your nervous system. And if you're pounding yourself at work and emptying your stress bucket, you're going to probably have a lower HRV and that may mean that you'd want to back off the heavy fran or whatever it is on that day-to-day -day. measurement so we touched on hrv but you know semi-annual or annual blood tests looking at inflammation and just making sure that you're hitting that those are all just very easy tests that can help be a guiding light to make sure that you're going in the right direction yeah and understand your genetics where do you come from I think that has helped me as well with the inflammation and everything that, um, what type of an athlete are you? Um, what, what is the tendency for you to do you like to run marathons? Maybe that's not good for your body anyway. So yeah, there is all the information is out there. You just need to get it. Yeah. And you know, plan for the long game, right? Like don't plan, don't try and do everything at once because I've tried to do that and you just get burnt out. Just plan for, the long game like this year for me is a power year next year may be an endurance year for instance mm -hmm. and i know you have similar goals right so don't worry about doing everything right now break it down into little itty bitty micro habits why don't we leave with just sort of because we need to wind this one down satsu uh why don't we leave with what's your favorite book on exercise you surprised me with that question. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I, have, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I apologize for throwing <laughs> throwing a question out of left field there, but um, I'll give you some time to think about it. So my favorite books on exercise. Um, if you're a hard gainer, meaning it's hard to gain muscle and you want to gain muscle, uh, which I actually am not, but I just enjoyed the book, Beyond Brawn is a good one. Super Training, which is a Russian strength training novel, I have it right here in front of me, is amazing, but you're going to have to go and pay a, an arm load for that. An arm load, that's not even a technical term, uh, <laughs> on Amazon, but it's a great book um, and you get into Soviet strength training. And then, uh, you know, our podcasts are really good resources on this. So we've had Marcus Philly on the podcast, who's CrossFit Games participant, Garrett Salpeter, who's just an incredible brain in terms of a guest. He's amazing. So he's the founder of New Fit, um, which the newbie is probably my favorite exercise device out there. And I think those are really where I would go for those resources. Mm, mm. I, I agree with the Marcus Philly episode, even though that's quite a long time ago. I think that was a really good one. Um, also, everything related to the HRV is quite trendy now. And uh, I like to follow all those discussions. Now I'm not talking about books because I still didn't figure out what, no, what to, which fine. one to mention. But I want to give a, um, a tip to anyone who wants to try something out. I've tr recently started using the Brain FM app uh, during my training, and especially for the recovery time that I do um, after my intensity workout. It's really good. Awesome. Try it out. Yeah, and decodingsuperhuman.com slash brainfm. We've had Dan Clark on the show. He's, uh, it's great. But Satu, thank you so much for this one. And uh, to everyone listening here, remember as always, perform better. Superhumans, before you go, two asks from me. Number one, if you can head over to iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts and just give us a five-star rating, it really helps get the word out. Number two, if you can... Give us a little feedback. Send us an email at podcast at decodingsuperhuman.com. Those of you that have actually taken advantage of this know that I read and respond to each one. 
Thank you so much for listening and have an absolutely epic day.